This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. It's Dancing with the Alleged Stars. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. So Dancing with the Stars returns for its 21st season. Oh, I just find that so hard to believe. <laughs> well, it's because they do two a season, so it's yeah. only really been 10, ten years. 10 years, but that's still hard to believe. Yeah. Now, as we've discussed before, the show has pretty much come up with several check boxes in their casting. We have athletes. Yes. We have Disney Star, so that's Synergy. Synergy with Disney. Also, ABC Soap Stars for Synergy. Yeah. We have reality show stars. Yes. We have a controversial star. And we have a comeback star. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's for nostalgia purposes. And then we have one or more ringers, ones who clearly have had professional dance training. <laughs> yes. They're in some way related to the music category. Right. Now, we did have a disabled category for a while, Mm -hmm. but I think they couldn't top themselves from last season. Maybe just a guy with a head, and that's it, (laughs) rolling around on the stage. I I mean, you know, with one arm and one leg last season. How much farther can you go? Yes. Now, we also have two pros returning and one on the disabled list. Mm -hmm. Louis Van Amsel and Anna Trebunskaya, who both left after season 15, are Mm -hmm. back. Uh, Peter Murgatroyd injured her ankle and it's going to require surgery, so she's out for eight weeks. Supposedly, she may come back in to do group dances near the end end of the the season. season. Not really clear who she was partnered with. Right. Because it didn't seem like they suddenly brought somebody in at the last second. No, but they hadn't really announced um, all the people before they, you know, when they were starting to practice and everything. Right, right. Also, Len is not returning as a judge. And of course, he's been flying weekly to and from the UK for the original version of the show, yes. Strictly Come Dancing, yes. over in the UK. And he's 80, I believe? He's old. Uh, so get ready for lots of contemporary, a.k.a. flailing on the floor, and jazz, a.k.a. flinging hands in the air. Yes. <laughs> also, expect a lot of guest judges. And I'm already predicting Miss Piggy as a judge. For and, synergy, and quite frankly, Mark has been pretty good at doing some predicting for this season of this show, as we'll probably talk about later. Yeah, here's the pairings and predictions. Now, my overall theory is that the first half of the season is based on skill, and the second half is based on popularity, mostly of the pros, because mm-hmm. <laughs> the stars aren't really huge stars. Not anymore. Nope. We start with. Victor Espinosa, who's paired with Karina Smirnoff. And he is a jockey. He won the Triple Crown this year. That is correct. Um, I don't see how that's going to work. He is short. Jockeys are short. I'm really surprised they didn't pair uh, him with, like, Whitney Whitney or or... Emma, somebody shorter. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, Karina Karina is not an Amazon, but she's certainly a taller dancer. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Um, So you put her, you put him actually pretty low. At 11th place. Yes. I put him right in the middle, around 7th place. I think because people want to see Karina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More than him. Do we have then Nick Carter, whose pro is Sharna Burgess. He is known for being in the Backstreet Boys. Yes. We actually uh, matched on this one. Wow, yeah. We both think he'll be 4th. He'll just get knocked out right, right. before the end. Yep. <laughs> Hayes Greer, whose pro is Emma Slater, he's known for doing Vine videos. Yes, and I would have just completely discounted him except for um, last season's girl who did YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, I think because he will be able to mobilize a Uh, massive fan effort. Yes. (laughs) And because of that, we both put him pretty high. I put him in third place. You actually had him as the runner-up. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, also because they haven't had... uh, male runner-up or thing for a That's while. That's a good point. Uh, we have Alexa Pinavega, whose pro is Mark Ballas. Uh, she is known for Spy Kids. Another match here. We both put him, put her in fifth place. Uh, you know, this is kind of the start of the middle of the pack for me. Right. Just fifth place down right. to about eighth or ninth place. And I, I really think that this could just be mixed up anyway, you know? Yeah. Now... 
traditionally, because when Len was on the show, Mark would do something to annoy Len. Yes. <laughs> Some weird thing that he'd get all mad about. Oh, all these production values. Of course, Derek can do whatever he wants, but yes. <laughs> Mark Ballas is not allowed to do that. So, But because Len is gone, I think he'll do better than he would have otherwise. Okay. Carlos Penavega, if you uh, heard that name right before, we have our first married uh, stars. stars, Alexa and Carlos. Uh, his pro is Whitney Carson. He's known for Big Time Rush. I don't know what that is. Uh, well, I think it's a band, and it's also a Disney show. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we have that check. <laughs> and uh, I put him in sixth place. You put him a little lower in eighth. Eighth, like in the, at the end of the middle of the pack. He's yeah. better than... Getting eliminated right away, but not, you know. Yeah. All right. Then we have Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Whose pro is Kyo Motsepi. Uh, she obviously is a singer. Uh, Kyo has done very poorly uh, the last few seasons he's been on. That's why I'm putting Shaka Khan in the last spot in 13th. And I put her at ninth, and mainly I'm just thinking of because uh, the last old singer. Oh, Yeah. Did actually very well. Very well. Yeah, she got much farther than she should have. You're probably right. And so I'm thinking that that um, it shall last through the up to the last part of the bottom round. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, she'll be the last bad dancer eliminated. <laughs> so we have Andy Grammer, whose pro is Allison Holker. He is also a singer. Uh, I put him fairly low. Uh, in 11th place, you put him all the way to 6th. Well, and again, it's that middle of the pack thing. Right, it's you hard know, to He tell. could be anywhere in there. But I think just because he has some musical ability, yeah. that, you know, he'll he'll keep his uh, hand in the game for a while. Yeah. Kim Zolciak, whose pro is Tony Davalani. She's known for one of the Real Housewives shows. Uh, generally, they don't do very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm putting her in 12th. And I put her at 10th, and that's only because I really do think that there will be two, you know, a couple people that go before her that you seem to think might stay around a while. Yeah. Then we have Gary Busey. That's one of those people. <laughs> yes. Uh, whose uh, pro is Anna Tribunskaya. He's, of course, known for being a reality show mess. Um, I, this is actually just a split, uh, a flip of the last one. I said 10th place, you said 12th. Yes. Now, you know, it could entirely be wrong about that. I just don't think he's going to be very good, but people could vote for him because they want to see what a train wreck he is. That's the only reason I put him as high as 10th. <laughs> and, and the same thing holds true for, um, Paula Dean, who we'll talk about a little bit later. Right. But, but first, Tamar Braxton, whose pro is Val Schmirkowski. She is a singer and Tony Braxton's kid sister. I actually put her very high on here, mostly because of Val. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I put her all the way into the runner-up position. You put her in the middle of the pack at seventh. I did. I, I really think if she was, if she's Tony Braxton's sister and she was really any musically inclined at all, she'd be more famous. Oh, that's probably a good point. Okay, we just mentioned her a moment ago. Paula Dean, whose pro is Louis Van Amsel. She's known for being a chef and known for being racist. And so I put her a little higher up again because I think because people want to see the train wreck. <laughs> and and, that and could you be said true. not so much. I think she'd probably be eliminated right away. I'm I I kind of think the producers might be a little scared of what she'll say. Oh, that's a good point. And maybe they may just kind of force her out. I don't know. Uh, I put her ninth. You put her all the way in the back of the pack at thirteenth. Yeah. Alex Scarlatos. 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 Whose pro is Lindsay Arnold? You're saying, who is this person? I've never heard of him. Well, maybe as if it was a month ago, you would never have heard of this guy because he's the trained he terrorist hero and serviceman. Yes. Now, when he was on GMA a week before they announced it, I told you, you will see him on Dancing with the Stars. Yes. <laughs> and sure enough... <laughs> So uh, I put him in the middle of the pack uh, because this is just a guy. Yes, but he, he does have, he was in the, uh, some armed forces. Right. So he has a lot of training Oh, yeah, he, 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 absolutely. So I think if, if, if there is actually a lick of talent there at all, that Lindsay will able, be able to, like, train him 
to be a good dancer. Yeah. So it's I hard to say. I put her put him in the middle of the pack at eighth. You put her him all the way up at, at third. three. Yeah, because I think that especially if if they keep hyping the whole you know he's a tr her terrorist hero. Oh, hero. and they will. Yeah. <laughs> that people are going to vote for him because of that. That is the angle. Yeah. And then finally. Bindi Irwin, whose pro is Derek Huff. Uh, she is the Croc Hunter's daughter. She's known for having a dead father. Father. And the only issue here is Derek Huff. So, and he didn't win last year. Right, exactly. So I think that this is probably a shoe-in. Yeah, we're, we're both saying that's number one. Not because Bindi has any particular talent. But because it's Derek Huff and the judges love Derek Huff, including one of the judges who happens to be his it's sister. sister. <laughs> Just a quinky dink. Quinky dink. <laughs> so. Any final thoughts? Um, I, I, my final thought is why are we still watching this program? <laughs> Well, now it's kind of like watching watching a car wreck. You just can't turn away. We're in the habit. Now we have to do it. Exactly. And so if you choose to watch this, you can uh, follow along with our picks. Or send us your picks. Tell yeah, us why you why think not? somebody's going to win. And then you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. Bye. I'm off to do jazz. Jazz.